Hey everyone, welcome back to Leela Suds. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys the second soap in the August collection. I absolutely love how it came out. And you might have seen my previous video where I was talking about the June Soap Challenge Club, uh, my entry. And this soap is actually my second attempt at that one pop wonder technique, which actually turned out really, really pretty but it didn't give me the exact results I was looking for. So um, so this is the second attempt at that soap, and it's still very, very beautiful. And there's actually four different colors in there, which was part of the challenge, but it looks like it's three. One of the colors kind of morphed on me. So that's why I didn't enter this soap into the challenge, but it came out really pretty. The, oh, I just love like the wispy kind of, um, pattern in these soaps. It looks really beautiful. And then on top I did kind of like a spatula technique that I actually learned from baking. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I did, I've been doing baking for many, many, many years since I was like 15 years old. And that's where I get a lot of the techniques that I use on soap. Um, and it just turned out really pretty. I was kind of going for sage leaves because the fragrance in these is pomelo sage. So pomelo is a citrus, I kind of associate it a little bit with grapefruit. Um, and then sage, so there's a little bit of that herbal note in there. Um, and I think it turned out really beautiful. It didn't, it wasn't my entry for the Soap Challenge Club because my goal for the Soap Challenge Club was to kind of get those separated color layers. Um, this is actually the soap that I entered. It has some really pretty soap flowers on top and then just kind of like these um, separated colors. You can check out this video. There is a link up in the corner. But yeah, back to Pomelo Sage. These Pomelo, um, I was actually inspired by the fragrance uh, Pomelo Sage for these uh, in terms of the color. So there's some nice orange, a little bit of like a cream color, and then obviously the green for the sage. So this one will actually be available August 7 at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at leelasuds.com. You can go to my Instagram. I always put a, a, clock, a countdown clock in my Insta stories. You can click that and it will actually set a reminder on your phone for when the collection launches because they do go pretty fast. Um, I do have some permanent soaps in the shop, but when it comes to a collection launch, they go fast. Like. Yeah, <laughs> so you might want to set a reminder. Anyways, um, I will be showing you how I made pomelo, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you so much. Enjoy! All right, so as usual, I'm just gonna start out by adding a little bit of sodium lactate to my lye water solution, which I've already prepped and it is at room temperature. I like to work at room temperature, it just gives me more time to make inter interesting swirls and um, it's just a little bit easier. And I'm gonna add some titanium dioxide directly into my lye water solution. Um, again, it's just easier because I don't want to add any extra water and I want the entire batch to lighten up a little bit. So I'm just going to mix it in there and stick blend it. Make sure there's no little lumps or anything uh, left over and it just makes for a more even looking batter. And now I'm just going to prep my colors and I have already put into the mixing jugs that I'm going to be using. I've already put the micas. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of oil from my big um, bucket and just add a few teaspoons of that into each little jug. And just make sure that the mica is properly dispersed into the oils. I prefer to do this method. Some people like to, to mix their micas and colors in separate little cups or whatever. Um, but as most soap makers know, the worst part about soap making is definitely doing the dishes. So <laughs> I cut back on dishes by just mixing everything in the same jug that I'm going to be mixing my soap batter in. Um, just drastically reduces the amount of things I need to clean. <laughs> and it just, um, it's just, yeah, it, I can just mix my soap batter in there and it's just a faster way to get things colored and just mixed in um, it, so in case my soap batter decides to accelerate or anything it's all in there ready to go 
I am saving a little bit. Uh, I'm at, I am mixing a, a lighter, like green, mossy green color because I'm going to be making the leaves that go on top. So just a little bit in a smaller container. Um, just giving another quick blitz of the titanium dioxide in the lye water solution. I always strain it because as you'll see, there are some little bits of TD that did not get mixed in. I run it through this strainer. I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have just left it as is but um, I just didn't want to be wasteful, so next time I won't be doing this. <laughs> I won't be scraping the um, mesh strainer <laughs> for TD. Um, it did leave a few little bits of um, floating t titanium dioxide dots in the final product, but personally that doesn't really bug me. Um, and this, I am just stick blending uh, very lightly. I'm not going to stick blend until trace because I am going to be mixing these a little bit more in this, the smaller jugs um, and I want this to be as light trace as possible so right now it's not even at emulsion and you will see it will actually give me a little bit of false trace when I'm pouring into the jugs um, but I'm not too worried because again I'm going to be stick blending these um, you can see it's kind of like an apple saucy um, texture and that's how you know it's like false trace but I'm gonna be stick blending these again um, in the little jugs so I'm not too worried because I know I will get them to trace or emulsion in there So here I'm just adding a little bit more of red Brazilian clay to the darker tone because those two colors are very similar and I was aiming to have four different tones because that was part of the challenge of the soap challenge club to have I think four colors for the regular category. So I was trying to get it a little bit darker, um, I didn't want to go too dark so I just left it there um, and in, in the end result they ended up looking pretty much similar. But here I'm just planning the order that I want the colors to go in um, because for the one pot wonder you do need to pour your colors in the order that you want them to layer in the soap. So I'm just going for a more contrasting color order. Um, and the way that I pour them in this jug, the bigger jug, is actually, it made for the pretty result, but this is exactly why I did not get those separated layers of color um, as I did in the third attempt, which was my entry to the club. I poured them on the side 
and I should have actually poured the colors closer to the spigot of the jug um, because that way it would have poured one color at a time instead of all four of them in kind of like a stripe pattern. And I did leave some mica at the bottom that wasn't fully dispersed into the batter because I did, I, I, I know how my batter works, so I did want to leave um, kind of like some mica stripes in the soap. So the orange and the last color do have a little bit of striping. And this is where it gets incredibly messy. This is not the best um, container to pour because I actually poured half of my batter outside of the mold. <laughs> it all fell on the sides like as I was boring. So it got really messy. I just didn't film it. But you get the idea. I just went back and forth um, on the side. And this is the green batter. I'm just waiting for it to thicken up a little bit. As you can see, the consistency is a lot thicker. So here I am just using a spatula and just kind of doing a leafy pattern. But I'm starting from darkest to lightest. So that first, I just took a little bit of the batter that I had and then I just added a little bit more mica to darken and deepen the tone. And then as I went, I kept adding less and less until I got to the original color that I had mixed it. And I just layered it kind of like a tree or like foliage. Um, the cool thing about this is you don't need to be too perfect or precise. Um, so that was kind of what I was going for. And it's a really easy technique, it's fast. Um, once you're done, just spray everything with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I use 91%. And then I actually did not gel this or anything. I left it uncovered because I wanted very soft tones. And now is everybody's favorite part, the cutting part, or at least mine is. Some people are always like, how can you cut such pretty soap tops? Well, I would, oh, it would be so hard for me to cut. I actually love cutting soap. I don't care if the top is like super pretty labor intensive. Cutting soap is super therapeutic. It's relaxing and it's a fun surprise because every single bar is so different. It's like you never know what you're gonna get. So it's like a quick instant gratification, <laughs> I guess. Like a few seconds of it because you're done with one bar and then you move on to the next one and the next one's even more exciting than the previous one. So, <laughs> And you can see I didn't get like those separated color layers but the design is actually really really pretty because it's kind of like these little wispy color waves in there. I'm actually really happy with how it turned out and the fragrance is incredible. You guys, it's so pretty. It's like a grown up citrus of sorts. Um, it just, it just works. It's really nice. I absolutely love it. I hope you guys love it too. And there you go, that is how I made pomelo. Um, my second attempt at the June Soap Challenge Club, the one pot wonder. I hope you enjoyed this video. I loved making it, I really wanna keep doing this technique. If you want your pomelo soap, set your alarm August 7 at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at lilasuds.com. I hope to see you all there and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. So yeah, leave me a comment down below if you liked how this turned out. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. Take care. Bye.